Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. Power Rings for Sale. We took a look at a 2004 issue of DC Comics Presents, wherein Hal Jordan decided that the only way to capture Gorilla Grodd after he'd gone on a crime spree was to set up a shop on a street corner selling power rings for a dollar apiece. This issue was part of a tribute series, a memorial to Julius Swartz, who had a practice on DC Comics Presents of commissioning covers and having writers create ideas off of them. The cover that was chosen for this Green Lantern issue was originally from issue 31 from 1964, an issue Swartz was executive editor on. That story was by John Boom with art by Gil Kane. I asked if you wanted to see the original, and the general consensus was, heck yeah. So that's what we're going to do today. Take a look at the original Power Rings for Sale. My poster will get here at some point, I swear. But before we get started, I'm Sasha, and if you're enjoying this content, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Join us on this comic book journey. Our cover is essentially the same as last issues. The little boy on the cover looks more horrified than keen though. There are a couple of people on here who seem troubled by this turn of events rather than excited. Look at the wad that guy's bringing over. Um, excuse me sir, one per customer. It doesn't actually say that. Some people could have bought 10 for all I know. One for each finger. 20. Their toes too. Our opening slash page reveals the twist of the story right away. Because suspense is an art not mastered by Silver Age interior openers. Aliens somehow manipulating Hal Jordan. Which, I mean, he has a green lantern. Space based. It's not that odd when you think about it. Clang by clang. Our enemy Green Lantern has conquered the Earth for us. We open properly on Green Lantern's best friend, Tom Kalmaku. He's come to get a doctor's opinion, a consult, because Hal has been acting oddly. He must have to do this often then. I'm sorry, just, you know, keep my Hal hot mess Jordan salt inside. Also, he got into this appointment by saying that he is Green Lantern's number one fan. Does that work for anybody? Just, hey, I'm Batman's fan and I wanna set up an appointment for him, let me in. How did he prove that he was his number one fan? I mean, I guess the people have seen him around with him, but how would you know that this doctor has? Like, look, I pulled this out of his trash. I am his number one fan. For those who are new to Tom, we've talked about him on this channel before. In some of our prior Green Lantern being a walking disaster videos, he knows that Hal and Green Lantern are one and the same, and currently has the unfortunate nickname of Pi. That the writers insist had no racial connotation and instead had to do with the fact that he was wide-eyed and had a round face and it was supposed to connote eagerness. Like, like a pie. While others feel it refers to Eskimo pies and is a bit of a slight against him being Asian. Either way, it's an unfortunate nickname. I will not be calling Tom Pie because I think that he deserves better. Hal is gonna call him it all the time though. And he's also gonna call him Pie Face. Why you do this to Hal writers? Why? You just give him holes that he has to climb out of. And you have people like me who will never let him forget. So Tom launches into an explanation of some of Green Lantern's odd behavior. Green Lantern is using his ring to shoot off fireworks. I was just testing out my ring, understand? Just testing it out. What is this doctor's specialty? Why did Tom select him specifically? I have a lot of questions beyond power rings for sale. Hal shows up for this anyway, because he's a good friend. And the doctor gives him a generic examination. Just check the reflexes, check his eyes, doctor things. How would he even know what to test for? Just, you know what? Leave it alone. So the doctor can't find anything except that Hal seems to be a little tired. But as they leave, Hal offers to cover the fee with money that he conjures up with the ring. Tom is horrified, but doesn't call him out because best friends stand beside you when you're committing crimes. Green Lantern, come with me, please. He would never do such a thing in his right mind. Wouldn't he though? Maybe you don't know him as well as you think you do. There's also an editor's note at the bottom of this panel telling the reader that lanterns can't use their rings for personal gain. This whole story has a lot of little editor's asides. They really are not confident that you were reading Green Lantern. Do you want to caress him a little bit less on the middle of the street, Tom? It is 1964. I don't want anybody to get arrested. Tom insists that there's something wrong with him and tells Hal that he has to at least call the Guardians. And Hal does agree to this. Again, he's a good friend, despite giving him the unfortunate nickname of Pi. Hey, another editor's note telling us who the Guardians are. Hal can't answer why he was calling them making something up but wanting a special mission, so Tom has to jump in. He tells him a tale of a Green Lantern shooting off fireworks in the middle of the day and counterfeiting money to pay for doctor's visits. So is that money gonna vanish when the charge on his ring runs out? That could be very awkward for somebody. Somebody's gonna get in trouble. Not Hal, though. The Guardians decide that this is indeed worth looking into. Green Lantern's lore expanded as he went on. At the start, it was pretty much just Hal. He was the core. The Green Lantern core is introduced as we go on into the lore. We don't even have Guy yet. Nobody else can do this. A mysterious force is acting on the Green Lantern of Earth, upsetting his control. They use their giant 1960s advanced computer wall to discover that Hal is being influenced by aliens, specifically a race called the Grohl, who want to colonize Earth because reasons. Oh man, a race of Mohawk aliens. Sweet, 
I look forward to the fashion under their reign. Punk fashion to appease our new overlords. We Earth nothing. This green lantern with its amazing powering shall conquer the Earth for us. But to attain that end, we must first get him under our control in order to prepare his mind for the massive dose of cerebral radiation which will place him completely under our spell. We must first unhinge his reason. Make him irrational by smaller doses of the same radiation shot him from here on our planet. Ah, so only about two doses then? Maybe one and a half? The Guardians are confident that Hal can beat this, even though while they were explaining this, he has left. It's fine, he can borrow Tom's notes later. So Tom has to go find him, and when he does, he is selling power rings for sale on the corner of a street for a dollar. Only a dollar a piece, this is the greatest bargain ever. You think it's a sweet deal now? Wait till he's selling them for the same price in 2004. Then he flies off. I don't even know if he sold them all or not, or just left them there for people to take. I'm gonna assume that he sold them. Anyway, he's flying up the sky right, a message to the people. Happy flying, everyone. I've sold duplicate power rings made by my own ring at bargain prices because I wanted others to share my joy of flying. Yes, remember him for the planes that he flew and for the messages that he wrote in the sky. Again, I'm sure that no one will get hurt because they bought these rings or commit any crimes, only good things. Good things for the people of Coast City. It's not like they're all gonna die horribly in a few decades, it's fine. The Grawls see this display and decide his mind is ripe for the taking. Only someone truly mad would Skyrite. So they blast him with this cerebro radiation, which causes him to take control of all the people of Earth with his power ring, just in one blast. My power beam is spreading over the entire Earth into every corner of the globe, affecting every human, turning them into living automatons. The ring is that powerful and Hal has it. I'm scared. What the ring can and can't do really changes over time. It does what the plot needs it to do and works how the plot needs it to work. A time-honored narrative tradition still in practice today. Change the rules as needed, just add lore. Hal makes his newly made automatons march like soldiers and also makes some climb trees because he can. Climb for Hal, peasants, climb. Once he's bored doing that, he makes his way over to the Grohl who have landed. You have fulfilled your purpose, Green Lantern. We have no further use for you. Therefore, our last command, who is this? Use your ring to destroy yourself at once. Wait, 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 wait. Are they planning to take the ring so they can keep controlling people, or is the control so total that they will just remain that way? That's too much power. No one should wield that much power. Look at Hal's I'm about to destroy myself face. That's gonna. So Hal disintegrates himself. Or did he? No, he didn't. He made himself invisible. Another thing the ring can do, which he most certainly does not take enough advantage of. Be invisible more, Hal. It doesn't matter if you trip. They'll just think it's a clumsy ghost. Hal then reveals that he wasn't just selling rings to people because he could or wanted them to share his joy of flight. No, he commands the people who have purchased rings up into the sky, using them as an army from which he can drain their will, adding their willpower to his own. I'm not sure why he had them take to the skies to do that, but uh, he did. I think he just likes making the people do stuff. Jump for hell. With this extra power, he's able to defeat the Grohl. And true to form, rather than arresting or detaining them, he tells them, don't, don't do it again. Leave and don't do it again. Feel bad. I spared their lives on the condition that they never come back and never try to colonize our planet. Other planets, fine. Just leave ours alone though. That's some other lantern in some other sector's problem. I think they'll keep their word after the bitter lesson they learned. I think it's the embarrassment that will truly keep them away. The shame, tricked by Hal Jordan via a rings for sale scheme. Tom comes up to ask him if he was ever truly under the girl's control at all. Oh, and get ready for nonsense as Hal explains that he was just playing along. You see, once I knew what their cerebral radiation threatened to do to me, I realized I could resist it in only one way, by becoming immune to it. What I did was to duplicate the radiation with my beam. Ah, look, another magical ring power plucked out of thin air. And secretly feed myself increasingly large doses of it. That way, my system gradually became accustomed to the radiation. And when they hit me with that massive charge of it, I felt no effect at all, though I pretended to be overcome by it. And afterwards, just to play safe and fool the aliens, I created the power rings with 24 hours of power and sold them. Um, that's nice and all hell, but we saw you sell the rings before you got the massive dose of radiation? Or are you saying that they dosed you before, maybe when the Guardians were talking and that's why you left? How long has this radiation infiltration supposedly been going on for? When and how did you learn about the Cerebro radiation if you hadn't talked to the Guardians? Did you just ask the ring? Why are you giving us some details but not others? I need them all, I'm a busybody. What was the irrational act that actually made you go, huh, I think I'm being controlled in some way? I like that irrational Hal is so tame. Fireworks in the middle of the day, hold on to your hats. So yes, he had a plan the whole time, and Tom 
London need to be worried. The end. Rings for sale. That was a thing that I read. And you know what? As mad and convoluted as this plot is, it works better than the 2004 version because it doesn't focus only on the rings for sale. That's there and happens and is worked into the plot, but the overall plot has to do with something else and actually something pretty Green Lantern-y, an alien invasion, which makes the concept stronger than just using the rings for sale as the central plot point. Poor Tom running around and going above and beyond for Hal, only for Hal to be like, I always had this. Do all those people remember being mind controlled by Green Lantern? Did he let them keep the rings until the charge ran out or did he summon them back? Again, did he keep the money? Lots of questions have I and lots of answers I shall never have. I'll just have to take comfort in Hal's lazy approach to dealing with villainy. Stop that. Don't do it again. This story does highlight a problem with Silver Age Green Lantern though. The ring doesn't really have any boundaries yet, so stories can feel a bit stakeless, because aside from no yellow, there's really no limit to what it can do. He took over the whole world in a matter of seconds. Tom should be worried about that, not about him making counterfeit hundreds. So, how do you feel about the original power rings for sale? Better than the update? Which did you like better? Are you as concerned about the power of the ring as I am? Would you buy that for a dollar? I saw all your Robocop references and I appreciated them. Share all your thoughts down below. While you're down there, please do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to spend it discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it and I'll see you again soon.